These watercolors are huge, and I'm here for it. If you watched my recent art haul video, then you know that I have been really getting into watercolors lately, and one of the items I got were these humongous watercolors by Federal. They're called Tonic Watercolors. These are made in St. Louis, and I bought them from St. Louis Art Supply Online. They are these beautiful, luscious watercolors that come in these lovely, humongous ceramic pans. And I got the Carbon Black, and I also bought this Core Mixing Set, which comes with six watercolors in it. It's basically a split primary set. It has all the warms and cools, perfect for mixing, and there is seven times the amount of a standard half pan watercolor in these pans. That is crazy. That is a lot of watercolors. Like, I am super stoked. So basically today, I think I'm just going to play around and have a good time with these paints, get to know them a little bit, set up my palette, and just see how I'm going to work with them because they're pretty unique, so I have to finagle a palette of my own. I'm going to put that together and I'm going to play around with that. Okay, so I have here the core mixing set of six and then I also have a carbon black that I bought open stock. This set has permanent yellow, signal yellow, federal red, quinacridone magenta, ultramarine blue, and phthalo cyan. This is what's considered a split primary set, meaning there are warm and cool primaries which is perfect for mixing. And it also comes with an empty ceramic pan so that you can use it for mixing or a medium or whatever you want to use it for. And they come in these fun little boxes. Now, these are not the only colors they have out there. If you look at this color chart, the first six on this chart are what's in my set. Then I have the carbon black, but they also have Thalo Evergreen and Prussian Blue as well. And all these colors are between a seven and an eight on the blue wool scale for light fastness, which means they are all excellent light fastness. And each of these ceramic pans is supposed to hold around seven times the amount of a standard half pan of watercolor. So there is a lot of watercolor here. And just taking a look, this is the black. It's in a beautiful ceramic pan. Ton of paint in that. I'm super excited. I'm going to unpackage them all and then I'm going to put together my own palette. And the packaging was pretty minimal. I had a hard time getting into the cardboard boxes, but I really do enjoy the packaging. I think that their branding is beautiful. It's simple, but beautiful. And then I'm just going to write on the side of each of these pans what the color is and the pigment information and light fast information so that I have that for later on since they're not going to be in their boxes anymore. So I do this for most of my pans anyways, even if I'm working in my half pans and I'm pouring my own, I always like to write on the side of them so that I can remember what the color is once they're away from their original packaging. Once I have them all out of their package, I'm going to bring in my butcher tray palette. It's a seven and a half by 11 palette. And I am just going to arrange the colors in the way that I know that I will be working with them. And I'm just kind of moving them around and figuring out exactly where I want to line them up. I wanted to have a space where I could have these lined up, but then also have plenty of mixing space. And so that's why I bought this palette. And this palette is a metal tray. And so what I am going to do is I'm going to bring in some magnets and I am going to, these are self-adhesive magnets. They're not very strong, but I'm going to put them on the bottom of each pan. So that way there, they don't slide around a lot while I'm working. This is not going to keep it in place if the palette gets turned upside down or something like that, but it will help them from sliding around too much in my palette, but it's also going to make it so that I can rearrange them really easily if I get more colors or if I just want to move them around in a different order. And I'm thinking that when they do come out with more colors, because I've heard through the grapevine that they are supposed to be coming out with more colors down the line, I will still have plenty of room on the other side of this palette to line up more colors and then also still have mixing space in the middle. Then I bought this reusable. It's a baking dish cover and it's got this cute little pattern, but the inside of it is like plasticky waterproof. So I'm going to get this to cover my paints just so they don't get dust on them when I'm not using them. Now, this is not going to make it so things can be stacked on top of it or anything like that, but it'll at least keep the dust out of it. And 
it's a cute pattern. And so I will link that in the description below as well. And this video is not sponsored by any of the companies mentioned. Now I am using some of the Fluid 100 cold press watercolor paper here. And this is just like a six by eight. And I've drawn some leaves with some Micron pens and I am doing this so that I can see how transparent they're going to be and just getting an idea of their color. So I just wanted to have some fun little swatches and it's fall time. I love drawing little leaves. This is one of my favorite ways to swatch is with these fun little leaves. And right off the bat, I'm really excited with how vibrant these are and how well they wet down. They re-wet really easily and they wash out with water very quickly. And so I think these are going to be a nice, fun, flowy paint. Now I am using the same paper I mentioned before, and I am just going to sketch out a fun little still life of some leaves. I am not working from a reference here. I wanted to just do a fun, relaxing project that would allow me to mix a lot of colors because this is a mixing set. And so I want to see how well the colors mixed. So this isn't going to be very realistic. It's not even going to be as highly detailed as I usually do. I just wanted to play around with these colors and relax. And already I'm really excited with how they mix. The first thing I want to do was mix a green since I don't have a green in this palette. And I mixed the phthalo cyan with the permanent yellow and look at that beautiful green. So I'm putting some grass in the background of my leaves just so that I could get that green in there. I wanna use as many of these colors as possible and mix as many colors as possible. And because this piece is going to be a fall leaves, and fall leaves aren't particularly green anymore, I decided to add some grass in the background just so I could mix those greens. And they're beautiful. I added some blues if I wanted to cool things down a little bit and added yellow, and I just went back and forth. And then I obviously, I brought in just a little bit of the black for the darkest areas, but not too, too much. Now I was able to get some pretty good detail in there, but these are a fairly wishy-washy watercolor. And so, once the paper is wet, even though I'm working wet on dry right now, the paper obviously is going to soak up some of the moisture. The colors do disperse quite a bit. So it's not keeping a ton of that initial detail, which is fine because this part is mostly just an underpainting. Again, I'm coming through. I end up using every single color in this set because I want to mix the high chroma colors and I want to mix some earthy colors and some grayish kind of brownish colors. I'm trying to do pretty much the full range here. Now in the end, it's going to come together pretty well because I'm trying to pay attention to where I'm putting my yellow leaves throughout the composition, where I'm putting my red ones, where I'm putting my purpley kind of leaves and my brown ones. I'm trying to balance my colors out. And again, since I don't have a reference, I'm not going to be too much of a perfectionist when it comes to the details on the leaves, but I am still paying attention to my composition and my warm colors versus my cool colors and just trying to make sure everything flows and balances out okay. And I had a blast. This probably took me over, probably over an hour to do just because I drew a lot of leaves. And of course I had to do a lot of layering. Watercolors tend to dry a little bit lighter than they are when they're wet. That's just the name of the game. And these are no different. And so there was obviously going to be a layering game here. Now, as far as that goes, they layered pretty well. I, I was pretty happy with how well I could glaze over previous washes. And I was pretty happy with that. I'm a layering person. And so I have no complaints in that realm when it comes to these watercolors. Now, I do wanna mention my friend Lindsay from the Frugal Crafter. She has also done a review on these and she's like the watercolor queen. She's got way more experience in the realm of watercolors. Like I've been using watercolors for years, but I'm not quite as much into the specs of watercolors. Like she's great when it comes to pigments and watercolor tends to be her main medium. So she is just like a go-to when it comes to that. I have not watched that review yet because I didn't want it to influence me too much. But she's gonna be able to give you all the technicalities on these a little bit more than I am. Right now, I'm just playing around and seeing how much I like to mix the colors and have a good time. So I will link her video in the description below as well. And once I'm done this voiceover, I'm gonna watch it because I, I wanna see if she feels similarly as I do with these. She and I actually got these around the same time and we hadn't even talked about it. So it's kind of cool. It's like a great minds think alike thing. And she did mention in a sat chat that I saw that they do plan on coming out with more colors, which I find super exciting. I will definitely be buying more of these to kind of fill out my set a little bit. But 
I am curious to see how much she likes these as somebody who has a lot of experience with watercolors. I personally have enjoyed them quite a bit. And I do want to, down the line, do a more detailed piece that is more in line with my style. I was kind of in a time crunch with this, but I really, really wanted to play with these paints. I've been working on a project in the background for a future video that took up a little bit of my time. So I kind of slipped this in in between other projects, but I have been looking at these paints since I got them and I'm like, I need to try them. I need to try them. And I'm like, you know what? We're just going to do a relaxing project. I put on some Halloween movies. I drew up some leaves from memory and that's what we're doing now. And I will be bringing in some colored pencil later on as well because I am somebody who I like to mix my media, baby. I like to play with all the supplies and I wanted to see how well colored pencil would layer over these. I also used some colored pencil to mask out some of the veins in the leaves. As you know, colored pencil is a wax and oil based medium and wax and oil both repel water in general. And so they are, they work as a great resist for watercolor. So anything that I wanted to keep a certain color, I would lay down with my colored pencil first. And then I also would come in and kind of indent the paper in certain areas where I wanted the watercolor to pool. So I did that for some of the veins and the leaves as well so that the watercolor could sink into the indents and be a little bit darker. And that all worked really, really well with these colors. Now, as you can see at this point, I have been able to mix a lot of different colors. This set is perfect for practicing color mixing, and it is a great starter set if you want to get into these paints. Now, they run around $100 for this set as of the time that I bought them, subject to change. Again, prices are always subject to change. Once these gain popularity, because these are fairly new, who knows which way the pricing will go. But for the amount of paint you get. Now, I granted you're only getting six colors for that and I can't remember how much I spent on the carbon black separately, but the set itself was around $100, but I digress. And that seems like a lot of money for six colors, but when you think about the fact that each pan has seven times the amount of a standard half size pan, th this set's gonna last me forever. And do I need more colors when they come out? Not necessarily. I mean, I would really love that phthalo evergreen that they already have. But as you can see, I was able to mix a beautiful green with what I have. This is one of those essential sets that you can get numerous colors from just from color mixing. Like the possibilities are endless with this set because you have your warm primary colors and your cool primary colors. So you can mix high high saturated colors, or if you want to, you can mix nice dulled down browns and grays if you need to as well. And you just can't beat that. So I really do think these are worth the price for the amount of paint that you're getting and for the quality of paint you're getting. The fact that the light fastness is so high, they're all excellent. Every color in this line is an excellent light fastness so far. I don't know what it's going to be like when they add more colors, but that is just amazing. And they rewet beautifully. As I mentioned, they layer beautifully. And you can get some fun textures too because they are kind of a watery, wishy-washy paint. You're going to be able to get a lot of those fun textures. I would have liked to play around with some salt and, you know, get some fun textures that way in this. And I'm going to play around with these some more. But this is my initial, what are these colors like? sort of video. So I might do another video down the line to see what kind of special effects I can get with them. I think they would have been beautiful for splattering as well. But, you know, again, I had a lack of time and I just really wanted to concentrate on mixing colors and layering and just playing around. And I think I achieved that here. Now I am coming through with my Derwent drawing pencils and my Holbein colored pencils. These are two pencils that I use a lot. And I also used some of the polychromos as well, as you saw earlier. And I'm just coming through and I'm straightening up some of my edges. Again, because I like to work with these two mediums together, I wanted to see how well colored pencil layered on top. And these pencils all layered beautifully on top. It was perfect for straightening up edges and for adding some detail that I didn't with watercolor. And I was really happy with that. 
And then later on, I did do a few touch-ups off screen and I used some of my Derwent Lightfast pencils. Those also layered beautifully. So I think that if you're somebody who likes to mix watercolor and colored pencil and you're interested in these paints, it will work beautifully for that. I used it with a bunch of different colored pencils and they all layered just fine on this watercolor. When I have more time, I will definitely play around with these more, but I just kind of wanted to do a first impressions video. And so far, I am really impressed with these. I would have liked to have had more time to do something a little bit more realistic and more detailed, like my regular work. But again, I am grateful that I was able to carve out just a little bit of time to mix the colors and play around. I am super excited about this. And I do think that my palette is going to work pretty well. Um, this is my first time buying a butcher tray palette and I bought it specifically for these paints. It had plenty of mixing space and I was pretty happy with that. And I do think I will have enough room to add more colors down the line. And I'll show you what that looks like after. So you can kind of see. So this is the final piece. It is super bright and vibrant. I'm really, really happy with that. Again, at some point, I will probably do something a little bit more in my regular style. But for something that I just did out of my head, I'm pretty happy with this. And I definitely got to know these paints a little bit better. And I think that these would also be really good for fun, abstract, wishy-washy compositions as well, because the colors flow so nicely and so beautifully. But you can get detail when you need to if you let your layers dry really well in between. But these hold on to water really, really well. But they are high chroma, like they mentioned. They're perfect for mixing. I was able to get a full range between beautiful, bright, saturated colors and then more dulled down, earthy browns and, and things like that. And I was really happy with the range I was able to get with this mixing set. I highly recommend this set. And the black was beautiful as well. I didn't have to use it too much. But it was nice to have on hand in the areas that I really wanted to darken, particularly in the background where the grass was, where I wanted it to be in shadow. Okay, so here is a look at the aftermath. <laughs> this is what the pants look like. As you can tell, they didn't really wear down at all. And then the only thing about this palette is that it kind of pulls around the edges. That part I was not particularly pleased with. The middle part is raised just a little bit, so it pulls around the edges. And... If you have a slanted desk or your floor is not quite even like mine, it's going to pull to one direction or the other. But it wasn't too horrible. I was still able to mix. I had plenty of mixing space and I am pretty happy with it. And I think these fit the paints perfectly. And so I'm excited to add more colors down the line. And I'm really happy with the cover that I got for it as well. That was so much fun. I really enjoyed working with these paints and I can't wait until they come out with more colors. I will probably do something a little bit more realistic down the line, something a little bit more detailed. But for today, I think that this was a great relaxing way to get to know these paints, to put together a nice fall little themed artwork and to just relax and have a great time. And I'm so excited to use these in the future. Have you tried these paints yet? Let me know in the comments below and let me know what you think of them. I think they're wonderful. They're a great value for the amount of paint that you get. They're vibrant, they're beautiful, and I love the uniqueness of the pans, and they're just beautiful. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next week. You have a fantastic day. Bye.